Hi everyone! Welcome back to Winter Chats with Robin, the Instagram live show where everything that can go wrong has already gone wrong. So we're off to a great start. Today I have Sarah Sheps. I'm very excited because she's just a lovely human being and I also greatly appreciate her patience as I switch phones yet again. Because why would it work on the first or third or fifth time? No, that's too easy. We need to challenge myself on a Monday. So I'm excited to see Sarah. It's gonna be great. I see she's here. We're gonna invite her in. Da, da, da. And send request. Will it work? I don't know. Maybe. Ah. I'm nervous. I, I really think all the tech fails have just decided to work now. I got them out of the way and now it'll work for Sarah. That is, that is the vibe I'm putting out there today on a little Monday morning, maybe. Okay, let's try again. Maybe not, maybe not. Maybe it just never works and I question why I do these existential crises on a Monday. Classic actor's life. Maybe it's gonna work, I don't know. Maybe I'll end up having to switch to Facebook. So versatile, us actors, aren't we? Ah, the inner monologue that I decide to share as an outer monologue. <laughs> Typical day. Let's try again. Send in request and it's hopefully gonna work or not. <laughs> it's not working. It's honestly, Sarah, it has not been working for me. I've been trying for the past 10, 15 minutes. So maybe we'll, okay. Let me see, uh, okay, let's see if that works. I tried to hit a different button. Maybe that'll make a difference. Did I oh. do it? I don't know what I pressed. I've never seen that option before. I don't know how to use the internet or social media. It's, I've been doing this for goodness knows how long and today my phone was just not having it and now this is my husband's phone, so. It kept asking me, like, I've never used, I, I got Instagram five years ago when Rodrigo Stoll posted this funny stuff about, he was like, baby Pavarotti was the only way I could watch it. I have never really used Instagram since. And then it was like, your functions, your settings, let it use your camera. I have no idea what I was doing. I, I appreciate the effort that you made. <laughs> and because look, no matter how many times I do this, it's never going to work. So it's, Guys, this is why you always have to be 10, 15 minutes early, but then expect to be late. That's classic actor's life right now. And my husband's out. I like, I did this by myself. I'm very proud of you. No big deal. I put on lip gloss. I'm loving the glasses. They're very cool. They're, um, I never had glasses until I spent my whole life on Zoom and I couldn't see and I went to the eye doctor. It's the only place I think I've been in the pandemic that was in a building and Turns out they I couldn't see, and now I have glasses. I mean, oh wait, are they the fancy blue light? Are they reflecting? They have blue light and stuff, and I, I only need them when I'm, like, on Zoom and not always. Like, I can still see. So I wear them 50-50. But it, it I, definitely should helps. We, should we do the chat like this really close? <laughs> no, then you see. Glasses. Gosh, just how much I need to um, deal with. I've been some wearing, <laughs> honestly, I've had glasses since I was eight. So, uh... I, I feel I feel the pain of needing glasses. It's not fun. It's a whole other conversation. But at least they're around, right? You're like, oh look, fancy technology, so I can see. Very nice. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I kind of just, hey Sarah, will you do this? I think you're very positive, and I think everyone should meet you. Cool. That is all. Uh, you're welcome. And yes, I am positive, 100%. They say I radiate rainbows and sunshine which is, means you only want to be around me in short doses, and this is short, so you're lucky. Um, because when you're around me full time, it's a little annoying. I don't know. I, I think everyone needs a little sunshine right now. I was, and honestly, I've watched some of the interviews you've done, and you've done a lot with your hubby, and I think you're adorable. And you just say <laughs> the most positive, like, guys, you know what? If you get an audition, think about like the 10,000 people didn't get one. You just, you're such a, a fun little spin doctor in a sense. like. This is why you should be positive. Like, if you're on hold and you didn't book it, it's still good that you're on hold. I'm like, but is it? I didn't book it. So I just, I need a little Sarah this morning. That's... <laughs> I always say the wins. Like, it's a challenging business, 100%. And you have to take each little win as like, woohoo! Otherwise, it can be so defeating. 
Like if the same casting director brings you in all the time, win, you get a recall, win. And if you're put on hold, like, holy crow, uh, you are like, I'm trying not to swear because I've been saying the F word all the time and my four-year-old has been as well. So my new thing is um, I don't swear, but I will because I have a mouth like a trucker. <laughs> I really like holy crow. I might take that one. <laughs> That's fun. We all get timeouts if you say the F word in this house. So if I say, fuck, I'll have to go to my room. Oh, no, but like, we'll pretend that didn't happen. Because if yeah. you go to your room, then it's just me talking to myself. And it's usually not fun to watch. But apparently, Herbie Sachs likes being around you full time. And he calls Oh, he's Lewis. the best. He's he adorable. And I, he and I did a show together. Gosh, it was probably, I don't know, I'm really bad at timelines. But maybe eight years ago, it was Strawberry Shortcake Live, my last musical that I did before I was like, and I'm just in casting full time. And I played Blueberry Muffin, and he played Huckleberry Pie, my love interest. No big deal. Whatever, you're just kind of, you know, meant, meant to be for life, even though you're both married. That's fine. Oh. But we toured, like, all of America, and it was great. Like, it was just the perfect way to hang up my dancing shoes. That's fun. I, I love... I, I think I spoke to him because he was on one of my lives earlier and I think he was talking about that one. And I love the idea of traveling around. And that's so, I also love that you were an actor. I, I never knew that. Not a I good just, one. <laughs> Not a good one. Um, but um, I was good at what I was good at. But um, yeah, it was great. Did you do more theater or did you ever do? I did stuff? all theater. Like I did voiceover work um, and, and theater. I was horrible on camera, like just awful, awful, awful. Which is funny because now all I cast, I mean, I've done a little bit of, of theater casting, um, but I, I mostly do just on camera. But I was horrid. I mean, you say that. Are you your hardest critic? No, no, I was bad. <laughs> like, the, like the, with commercials especially, anything really, it's, it's just about being truthful and, and like a normal person in a situation, right? And I, as a normal person, don't come across truthful. Like, I'm, I'm already a cartoon character. So, like, you don't really want that on camera trying to sell, like, a aha. Like, this would be like me normally drinking, which isn't very subtle, which is, you know, what it's all about. So you, know, you say that, okay, I think, and I feel you, I love over the top. And I think that it just wasn't our time yet. And I think now people really want in your face character. This is my, I'm not a casting person. This is just what I think. I think that we need to do commercials. Then we're like, hi, this product is in your face. You're welcome. And then just kind of sell it that way. But that's also why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Robin, no one's looking for that. I think everybody wants truthful, real performances in all aspects of the business. That's how what I've, I, I mean, now in long format in, in theater and, in, I mean, of course, there's always those nuanced special ones, but I think we just want to see, like, just truthful, beautiful performances, whether it's selling a can of AHA or crashing a Mayday plane, you know? Classic. <laughs> but I think when I'm about to play the I'm selling the product. Oh. Maybe. I think when I'm 70, I'm going to become an actor, maybe. Like, sometimes I feel very committed to the, like, senior citizen roles. I think I could really, like, I think that that could be my, my, my time. But you got to do it when you're 60 and then compete with everyone in their 70s and be like, who is this spry 70-year-old? guys? I'm I'll mad. still be working. What am I saying? I'm a workaholic. I won't have time. I don't know. This will turn into what should Sarah's future acting career be? That's what this whole live can be about. Uh, I think that'll get the people they're paying for their bucks. So We just did a commercial where it was like teenagers dancing to TikTok. I honestly don't know what TikTok is is really but I sort of am trying to figure it out because it seems to be like a theme in commercials like TikTok dancing and while they were auditioning I, I'm like my camera's always off I'm just you know watching and I'm like dancing and singing along to the TikToks and I like really felt in my element so maybe I meant to be like a teenage girl those are the rules I'm not sure you could but, be the mom of the teenage girl where everyone's like mom you're embarrassing me but you own it yeah but I would watch that I'm happier I, behind the camera I mean, that I appreciate you coming in front of the camera for this. I'm very <laughs> grateful. Okay. I, I, no, I, I just think that anyone, I think a lot of actors need to realize, and this has took me so long too. It's like, you know what? Casting wants you to succeed. And then especially there's people like you that are just throwing out positivity. You've got this and be yourself. And I'm like, oh yeah. And yeah, that, that is, that is smart. Good advice. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. If we like, 
if if we send in bad tapes or like we're not going to waste anyone's time we know how busy everyone is self tape self tape self tapes i mean my husband's an actor so i see like you know eight tapes do monday morning um if we don't think you have the potential or you are right for the role i'm not going to be like just tape for fun let's waste your time and our time like there's just no way uh, no one has time for that so of course we need you we we believe in you or you wouldn't uh, we wouldn't want to see your work very true I love a lot of them lately have been saying like, have fun with it. And I think for me, who has a little too much fun, maybe not don't. So I'm wondering when you say have fun with it, what do you expect to see? I think just make it your own. Like we give you a specific self tape instructions as we get. And it's always like, I mean, I just put out a new job today. I had a call with the director this morning with Steven. And so we get what, what they're looking for. So we give you as many like, uh, hints and, and whatever, like just s as successful points as we can of what this spot will look like because it's hard to, you know, just see it from a script. But then, like, you just make it your own, make it yourself, you know, that I think that's what they mean by have fun with it. Like, just, just go for it. And, you know, we usually we want one or two takes. And when it's like a robot doing the same take over and over, like, if we say give us two options and you do the same thing and then it looks like you just like, put your other the same tape again like that's not having fun with it and that doesn't bode well for your audition so if we ask for a couple of takes and say you know change it up a bit like do it you know take some risks have some fun you have the safe take always first so mm -hmm. go for it I, I like hearing the multiple takes because I know some people just say I want the one take and then go from there but it's good to know the multiple takes have fun with it make it your own kind of thing I mean if something's I try and watch as much as I can if something's really if one takes like really not good or whatever like we, we we have the ability to edit on our end you know or if you know um we can we can fix it up for you but like it takes a lot for me to delete someone's take or for me to delete someone's entire audition like it has to be pretty darn bad challenge accepted <laughs> <laughs> but everyone it's very funny now because there's so many self tapes everybody always accidentally uploads like every big session someone will upload something else like i'll be watching mcdonald's and then all of a sudden i see like this is sarah reading for my rbc audition and i'm like oh and then the you know the agent will send me the right one but it's very funny it happens you know once a day just so you well they want to show their versatility right i, I guess <laughs> just in case this one doesn't work out look at how well they can do as a banker Ooh, yeah next project exactly well, honestly that's there's a game being played that i have just decided is a game so yeah i mean it's fun it keeps me on my toes and like you know it keeps me watching tapes otherwise i could i could become lazy and just be like oh i'm sure it's perfect yeah i mean that's the thing your job's not hard enough so let's <laughs> but you know what it's nice i never got to watch auditions and steven will say the same too like or we're so limited with how many people we could see because we had to bring them into studio um, and now with the self tapes, we can like we've met so many more actors, seen so much more stuff. Steven has the ability, you know, to watch so much more. I have the ability to watch so much more, and 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 you know, take risks on newer actors. And it's been wonderful to really see people shine. Like it's, it's been, and now we have all of Stratford and Shaw and Canadian Broadways. It's like I'm starstruck at Recall sometimes. Like I can't talk, or I can't even. I have to go dark because I'm like so starstruck because I've seen them, you know, at Stratford for so many years and I just can't handle their talent. And I'm like, and then they leave and I, I'm like, do you know who that was? That was this. And I read their theater resume or I'm, you know, like, I'm like, that's, you know, and sometimes we get the entire cast of, of Come From Away sometimes, you know, and I'm like, um, it's so exciting. And because I'm such a theater lover, I just like will pop on live and be like, that was so-and-so from this. And it's very exciting. That's the only really good thing about the pandemic is this, these amazing theater actors who are, are available like for five minutes a year to do commercials are now available. And we have some like good high paying gigs. And so we've just seen some talent that honestly, like I, I freak out when they come on Zoom. I like sweat and panic. It's like, oh my gosh, what am I wearing? Even though I'm not on camera, I hope I look okay. Oh yeah. And I, and I never do, but. Um... I, well, that's the reason I didn't do my hair. I didn't watch. No, I am still days. sweating from my run, but I didn't wash my hair. I put on a headband so you couldn't see, and I put on blush, which is mostly covered in my own sweat. No, I think it's <laughs> really hot. And again, I've committed to doing these chats by my window as the sun is beaming in, and then I don't want to have the air on because then it's too loud. So 
And it's going to be a schwitz today. That's what I've decided. Just full yeah. on. It's blocks. so nice out. Like, this weekend, I couldn't be at home. Like, I couldn't. It's just, and now that the the work phone is my cell phone and emails, like, I try and work outside at parks all the time, but I do a lot of copy and paste fails. Um, like, here's the link. And then I'm like, whoops. Um, so I always have to stay sort of close to my computer, but I try and work outside as much as I can. Yeah, why not? It's. It's just, it's so funny in Canada because we go, okay, winter's over. Now we have the weather, soak it in. And okay, winter again, I guess, whatever. Well, yeah, it's lovely. I, how's your son doing? Not, can we talk about your son? Cause I oh yeah, he's the best. Him. Okay. He um, is so cool. He's had a bunch of auditions this week. Um, and he's he very talented. I don't know if he's talented. It's just that he likes being in front of the camera and he's so used to being a man that he kind of liked the rooms. But he's um, he's very into casting. Like I have to often um, like go black because he'll like give his opinion on stuff. He'll be like, no, didn't like that one. And then he loves choosing talent too, especially kids. He'll be like, the one with the glasses. Or he, um, and he'll always ask me like, what are we casting today, mom? That's so he likes it. Okay, but I, look, I honestly think that your son is a pro because back in the day of in-person auditions, I had the pleasure of auditioning with him and <laughs> it was such a joy because this is what happened. Okay, I have so much respect for your husband. He's like, okay, no screen time, Henry. And then like Henry just did his thing, got in the zone, whatever his child mind was doing. <laughs> he goes in, completely took direction and it was the easiest child I've ever auditioned with. And I booked that one and I'm like, this hey. kid is magic. I need him around me. It was it was so amazing. I'm like, I just, but now he's got a four year old attitude. And he'll be like, Mom, don't really feel like working today, or I'm done. That was a good take. I got it. You know. So who knows? That's funny. Four yeah. year olds. I see. I got two year olds. Have had. I don't have kids, so I just make up random facts about children. Four no, two was good. Two we could okay. tell him what to do when he'd listen. Now he's like got opinions, and he'll be like, No, I believe I'll do it like this or whatever. Who knows? I have no idea. Like he was, he did a few actor gigs and they were like, join the union. And I love actor, blah, blah, blah. But I was like, maybe like, he's like two. I'm like, I don't know if he wants to join the union. I, I haven't, I don't know if he wants to be an actor. Like if he wants to, you know, be an actor, sure we can join. But for now it's so just fun times. That's, I didn't realize you could start that young, but yeah, why not? Can babies be part of the union? Is that yeah. a thing? Yeah. You have to be 14 days or older to, um, obviously to work legally, but, uh, yeah, I mean, once, yeah, babies, I'm, I'm sure there's tons of, especially like identical twin babies who are on series and stuff. They've got to be full union. Otherwise they'd be buying permits all the time. Yeah. I, I love that. It was 14 days, 13 days. No, you can nope. be actor. No, it, it's, 14... there's labor laws. The actor slash the government has made the entertainment industry. is the only place where kids can really work and they have made it. The laws are so crystal clear and beautiful and safe. Um, yeah, it's great. They've done like an impeccable job. And you know what, it makes sense though, because honestly, I love watching children and then they become uh, adult actors, I guess. And you see the choices they make and how invested and they're just not in their head, they're living their life. And it's so magical. It's just so beautiful and magical and free. I'm like, oh, oh the kids who get it are like some of these kid act. I feel like Toronto has some of the best kid actors in the in the world like and some of them i've watched them like do our commercials to now they're so busy there's no way i could get them for a commercial but their truthful beautiful performances are unbelievable it's a joy to watch them uh work it's unbelievable like the kids who get it are just like mind-blowing inspirational and so that. cool and have other things and it'll be like They'll just tell me about their hockey games and like they're so well rounded for them. This is, you know, they go to work, they work and then they are uh, kids other otherwise. I mean, right. It helps to actually be a child and not miss out on that. So, yeah, no, there's some it's kids in Toronto that are just like, whew. I mean, and now they're on every series. It's like I, I can't watch TV with Henry without being like, there's so and so and there's so and so. That's I love, but I love when you see when they start out to where they go and they go, oh my God, you were started off in that little commercial and now you're this and oh, well, I don't know you officially, but I've seen you grow and I'm proud. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Some of these kids. It's like, I wonder if you still remember me. I felt we had such a close bond, but are you too famous for me now? No, everyone has to remember you. There's no way. People reach out to me like, oh yeah, I remember Sarah back in the day <laughs> in person. She was always smiling. I'm like, 
Yeah, that sounds like Sarah. Or like buried behind your computer crying. Um, See, I didn't. 50 I didn't 50. That far. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it was, you're still an actor. So whenever I saw you, you were keeping it together. But Maybe. But you're always so considerate. You'd always just remember things. I'm like, this, this, she knows what she's doing. Very on the ball. I respect that. <laughs> we got a good team. I have, um, I have a Katie. I, I don't even, we don't even know what to call her. So we have Steven, our fearless leader, obviously. And he keeps it fun and light. And I mean, he makes it a fun place to just, I mean, it feels like we're like a family. Like it, it's a fun place to work. And then we hired this girl, Katie, who is good at everything and everything I'm not at. And she's just like this silent woman behind the scenes. And she just fixes all my mistakes. And I mean, we, we we're, we're like, what do we call her? Like, is it an executive assistant? But that's like not fair to her because she can't use the word assistant. So anyways, I have this Katie who just is on Zoom with me all day. And she just like, just organizes like everything. It's so great. She's the fixer. I've decided. She's very oh. Olivia Pope, the fixer. Yeah. Yeah. I don't the know why I don't want to give her a title because then like that would mean she's like trying to find another job for her resume. So oh, yeah, that's true. that's true. You know what I mean? If we have to give her a real title, it's like, why? Looking elsewhere? I mean, I understand. You're never leaving. You're here. Yeah. If I were her, yeah. I mean, I'm crazy. So it's a lot for her, but. <laughs> but I have a key. I think everyone, it's, it's passion. Everyone in the industry has a little, their own eccentric qualities. For sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I was reading, again, I, you're a little anonymous online. I'd like to research people. I'm like, I don't see a bio. But I love that Jenna, Jenna Warner wrote an article and quoted you. I love Jenna Warner. It was in an Me after too. thing. She's just a sweetheart. And it was saying how you research talent on Facebook. Is that All the time. Like, I oh, mean, it's great. It's now too. So I often go to find pictures because they're like, hey, what does that person look like without a mustache? And so I create people's Facebooks to find that. I know how to do that. I'm not very social media. Obviously, I don't know how to use social media. And a lot of times now they're also looking for like influencers, which honestly, like is a whole new world. I don't understand. So that's when I hire someone who understands influencers and they find them. But a lot of the time, and it's not me who's who's looking at people but like if we're casting a spokesperson or if it's a government job often the clients will search all your handles um just they want to see what what you're putting out there so it's i mean i always tell people when they're like well, should i do a lot should i not do a lot it's like should i get tattoos should i dye my hair purple it's like you do you whatever makes you happy as a human if posting certain things on social media like bring you so much joy or you feel comfortable sharing certain parts of your life even if it's a little controversial do it um and if you know tattooing your whole body makes you happy you do it and you'll lose jobs a little bit for that and you'll gain jobs you know and someone might see your very political or very controversial post and and maybe not want to make you the spokesperson of their company and somebody will fall in love with your strong beliefs so it's like you have to you know live for you as a human and less for you as an actor is what i always think but know that people are i mean not me because i don't know how to use social media but people are kind of looking um a little bit deeper than they used to to going close like we're watching you <laughs> <laughs> but I, I always find great pictures it's so awesome like when i need like can we see a photo of them more casual you know to try and sell you the client and i'm like in people's facebooks i'm like oh they're wedding here you know um it's all sort of out there unfortunately i know as we every time i talk about social media i literally finish my talk and then revamp my social media because i'm like what am i sharing with the world i don't know but I'm showing pictures of ducks for my runs, it's pictures adorable. of my son, only because I'm such a lazy person that I don't have like a good baby book. So I just post pictures to Facebook and it gives me my memories every year. And that's where I store them all because I'm not like, and I, then I post pictures of baking like those. That's it. My social media is pretty boring. The baking? No. I'm a stress the baking, baker. Every time I, it looks the, also, I'm like, I thought there were only three of you. And you bake as if you're having this giant party every time. Like, you know, I live in a condo that's like a family. Like, Henry's got friends here. I live in the distillery. I, I can walk to so many friends' houses. I bake super... I don't bake with a mask, but I bake super safe and super clean. So there's a small... It's obviously a small COVID risk, but I feel pretty darn safe. So I... My neighbors... All my neighbors get treats, like, often because and and I'm a stress baker like on the weekends I just feel so light and fluffy and airy and I don't bake at all 
And then like, if it's like stressful at work, like we're in the middle of like three casting sessions, I have two computers going and I'm like proofing a challah. Like, I don't know what it is, but I ha and I'm like, I have to have dough rising if I'm stressed out. Um, it's weird, but yes, I'm not a stress eater, which is very good. Oh, that is because good. I have like no desire for any of my baking perfect but like I have to bake and sometimes like my husband will wake up it's like 7 a.m and I've made four things like I just obviously something was stressing me out I had to wake up and start baking and I'm not a good baker either like I you know some people are like just like my husband's a great baker my mother-in-law great baker um they're like scientifically great bakers me a medium but uh, I just love it I love that you don't eat what you bake. That's why I legitimately would not allow because I, I don't, I'm a terrible baker, but if it has sugar in it, I'm going to eat it. So that's why I'm like, okay, let's just not bake. And then, you know, and then I'm cheap. So I don't want to buy the expensive fancy stuff because you know, it adds up. So, you yeah, know, that's, that's the logic. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've never been a, a, a yeah, not, a, not so into it. I, li I like it. the thought of having a beautiful glass of wine in the evening. That's my passion. I see. Look, everyone loves their wine. I, it's also, it's very funny. I will admit this and that's fine. You can stop giving me beer and alcohol commercials. I don't drink. It's very evident. If anyone has seen any of my auditions, she doesn't know how to hold any glass. It's very funny. Honestly, there's a comedy bit there that it's like, how do I drink? I don't know. But, and it's simple, right? It's like this, but I'm like, uh, I don't like it. So when someone holds a wine glass, it's if you want an awkward comedic, pro it's the most confusing thing to me. And I tried and I've watched videos. I'm like, how are they holding the glass? What's the, what are they doing by the stem? Like if I hold it here, then it gets heated up. Like, but am I, I too good stem, at it? I wonder, I, I, I think I'd be any glass. I'd be like, I got you. Oh, well, that's, that's what I'm, I mean, there's a skill set there. I would watch your videos of how to hold a wine glass. I My think. husband had to smoke a, like a herbal cigarette in a movie. I, I don't know, like, I, I have no idea what timing is, but at some point in, during the pandemic, and he had to ask the props person, he's like, I'm sorry, like, how does one hold a cigarette? And it turns out he was just like peeing at a urinal with it hanging out of his mouth. So he didn't even have to like, um, hold it. But he was like, I don't know how to do it. I wouldn't know how to hold a cigarette. That I'm bad at. I you give me a also, coupe, a champagne flute, I got you. I mean, sometimes, look, I've never, I just think some people make smoking look really cool. And I don't smoke, but I'm like, some actors, they just, they understand how to use the prop and how to just have become a hand talker with this cigarette that makes me want to just learn how to smoke so I can have that toy. I mean, it's not a toy, it's it's cigarette, it's dangerous. But <laughs> that, that's just a side thought. I'm like, oh the elegance of smoke because they made it look the long cigarettes back in the day and they go eh, well they don't they do whatever I don't know how to smoke <laughs> they just make me neither cool. nor does my husband <laughs> it's there's a lot of skills that us actors should figure out uh, or not maybe but that's I, I honestly think there should be a class of how to use basic human props because I like, how do I hold a coffee cup like a human? I don't know. I think people just like need to just feel comfortable. Yeah, just everything should look normal. And like, people are like, I don't understand why I have to do a bite take. I'm like, okay, like y I could show you, you know, let's say we're doing a hamburger commercial, you know, for McDonald's or something. And, and we need to see everyone eat the product. At first I'm like, it's crazy. Everyone can eat a hamburger. Like this is so ridiculous. But then I like watch the takes and I'm like, no, not everyone can. You know, it's, it's not a bad skill to practice like biting a bun in front of like, well, we all have time during the pandemic, bite a bun in front of a mirror, record yourself and, and you know, just make yourself look normal. Yeah, a coffee cup, a lot of like, you know, sip a cup of coffee. It's, but it's, you know what is also, and I was talking to someone about this too, it's like something that's technically a private moment, you have to be comfortable putting on, on camera and just not thinking, this is weird, someone's watching me drink coffee. Yeah, because it is. It is. It's all very strange. I mean, there's nothing normal about it. Like some you, I remember you go in and there's like a tray of crackers. Okay, eat the cracker. Thank you for coming in. Like, I. It's just so. It's so funny and so interesting. A tray of crackers where everyone just takes one. Could you imagine now in COVID times, like having food out and oh, it's going to be so different in casting. Everything will be like wrapped individually. You know, I can't even imagine can't imagine but it's but it's so interesting though because I don't think you can mind eating a like 
it's just so miming eating food versus actually eating it. I think you need to see. And oh, when yeah. I spoke to another casting director, she said, no, like she was casting for whatever food thing. And she just, they were looking for different things and she didn't need them to eat a burger. And I thought, see, look, again, me being an interesting human, I think you would want to see how interesting I ate a burger. <laughs> so, but I guess some people don't care if you have the right fit, but I don't oh, know. No. I really, I like that you look to see how they eat. I mean, I don't like it because again, that's just the lack of things that I can book any food. Um, <laughs> I think in general, the, the client would appreciate it as opposed to booking and then I have what? been frozen out of my Uber Eats account, our company Uber Eats account, about 100 times in this pandemic because we've done so many food jobs. Everyone had to eat a McChicken, so I sent 86, you know, a day Uber Eats. And they think I'm a robot all the time. They're like, we've, like, we've cut off your credit card and we've cut off your Uber Eats because they think that, like, like who sends 86, you know, spicy McChicken meals out in a day? Like casting gus. Um, so it's been very, very funny how many times Uber Eats has thought I'm a robot. And my credit card too is like, I'm sorry, ma'am, you seem to have ordered 86 Uber Eats in one day. That's, wait, so you, so whoever gets the commercial for McDonald's, you would send it for recalls. I, oh, for, for recalls, for recalls okay. yeah. We, and not just for McDonald's, like we've done a few other ones where they needed to eat uh, pad thai or they needed to eat like just different things where they wanted them to actually eat long noodles or something. And you, I mean, you can't, you can't ask people to spend money on a commercial. That's not fair. I mean, I could ask you to like, you can eat, take a bite of anything. Everyone has a piece of bread or a cracker. Or, you know, I don't feel like guilty that way. But if I'm like, you must have long noodles or you must have, you know, an actual McChicken, like there's no way I'm going to be like, please go spend your own money. Like, I don't think we're allowed, obviously, nor would we want to. So we just have to, for safety, obviously we're not having in-person auditions. So we're sending, you know, uh, stuff to people's houses and it's very interesting it's been very interesting and it, what if it doesn't get there on time it does don't you okay. worry like i have this master I, I, actually i'm I, saying that i'm like yeah, of course it does okay don't you worry i am i have figured out how to send anything to anyone we did all sorts of things where people needed to wear certain products it has been sent we have yeah well, I will never have in-person auditions, if, or, sorry, uh, not I. Steven would never have in-person auditions until it's safe. And so we have figured out safe drops of literally anything you can imagine. That's really interesting. <laughs> it That's has so, been. You're like literally getting a delivery. And even if you book the commercial or not, you get a free meal. So that's kind of nice. And I, I had fun near the end, like picking people's drinks because everyone had to have a combo. So I'm like, Pink Fruitopia, like just like picking the weirdest stuff no one ever orders for fun. Sometimes I do like half Sprite, half root beer, like just to like really mess people up. It's a taste test. Do you know what you're drinking? Yeah, you, you know your you life know. is, you know your life is boring when, and we were, yeah, when it was a lot of seniors, I was like, what do we think they've never tried? Orange Fruitopia, like, ooh, like the fact that that's exciting to me is like just shows how not exciting my current life is. I think that's exciting. <laughs> I'm almost wondering if I've tried Orange Fruitopia. My mom is watching live, but my mom doesn't even have Instagram. I have a lot of questions now. If she's, if she's even watching, I'm so impressed that she figured it out. She's at the cottage with bad internet. I'd be, if, if she's actually watching this, then good on her. Oh my gosh, do we have words? What, what would you like to say if your mom is watching it? Just, she's the best. I wish she, I wish she could come live and, and meet everyone too. She's like the coolest woman you'll ever meet. I mean, I could invite her in, but I don't think she's ready. The fact that she even joined, I, I would be, that would be, I would be, I think that would be too much. No, that's fair. It was uh, <laughs> lovely seeing your name. I believe it's Joni. Yeah. She's quite cool. That's a really fun name. Yeah. She's a really fun woman. That helps. Yeah. I think so. I'm reading all these names too. And I love when I appreciate the full name. I mean, I know a lot of the people and their handles, but when it's not, sometimes when it's an arbitrary name and I go, I don't know who you are. I want to thank you for your comment, but I can't, I will try and say your username. Uh, hello, I have a dream and I own a raincoat. Uh, it just so I didn't even know I had Instagram and <laughs> I joined Twitter because I've become like, I feel like I'm part of the vaccination uh, hunter team. Like I am, Anyone I know who needs a vaccination, I have booked for them. Like I have become just like obsessed with anyone who wants to be vaccinated, getting them their vaccinations. 
And so I got Twitter so I could follow that. I'd never had Twitter. It's Twitter is interesting. Like I had to. Oh no, I think I lost audio. Oh, I just lost audio. This is so frustrating. I want to know why Twitter's interesting, but I don't know if it's me. Is it? I can't. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I, I see the struggle. I'm here. I know. <laughs> How do I get? Um, okay. Are you? Oh, that's. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so it's not me. It is Sarah. <laughs> Sarah. Okay, so you reversed. Uh, Sarah, why don't you try leaving and then coming back in? So just exit this and then I'll invite you back in because that was adorable. I'm very fine if you keep the hearts. That was really fun. Um, let me try in. I don't know how to kick you out. I don't want to kick you out. But if you click, there should be an Okay, you kicked yourself out. That was fun. We're gonna try again. We are doing really well. I'm very proud of Sarah. It's her first time doing an Instagram Live. So, I see she's back and we're gonna send a request. And of course it's going to work. Did I do it? Yes, you did. Yay. I found these things when I, was, when I couldn't find my voice. Look at this. I, I very much love, I don't tell everyone, but you're rocking the filters. Oh, I didn't even fun. know there was filters. This is like, like, is, should I, be, should I become like a social media person? Is that like an influencer? I don't Honestly, know. Like, you just became an influencer. It's, <laughs> look at these. <laughs> this is so cool. You're, you're attacking yourself with love. That's how we roll. Am I like a hundred that, that that was so hard for me? Yes. You're not a hundred. I'd say you're like a spry 97. Like pathetic. <laughs> but look at me, I got back in all by myself. You did. I, I was probably saying was nothing worried. important. Um, I was, I felt like I was having a deep conversation with you when I was silent, but nothing much to say. I saw you, I saw you melt, help. And I didn't yeah. know what to do on my end. So I, I prayed a little in my head. I get very religious on these things because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought I made my phone so it would leave me alone. Like, I guess they, I don't even know how to do that. These phones, they find you and they, yeah. The connection oh was pretty good so far though, so. But then my phone rang. I'm pretty sure it was Actra calling me. Classic yeah. Actra. It was. What can you do? Um, yeah, whoops. Oh no, it's okay. It's fine. I just pretended to look off somewhere too, as if I, I was important, but I realized anything that I had to see would be on my phone, which I'm doing a live on. Although it's my husband's phone. But yes. Choose your filter, Sarah. What I kind of like this know? one. I, I feel, and then you're sending out love to everyone watching. I think we're going to stick with the hearts. I'm trying to describe anyone for anyone that's like visually impaired in case it's just audio only. Sarah chose hearts <laughs> and like a little, little heart. caption there in case people are only listening, trying to be- I just can't it. believe I got myself back in. You're gonna, you're gonna start your own series now. Be like, this was so easy. I should do this every day. Look at my- I've got a lot of time. I'm looking to pick up a hobby. <laughs> Not. Um, you're, gonna, you're gonna do Instagram live on your run? Guys, check me out. I'm running. Here's no, so my run is, I live in the distillery. I am right by the Dawn Valley. So I have this beautiful trail. It's like, and, and you know what, I shouldn't call it a run because that's like offensive to actual athletes. My jog, um, like my, my slow jog, uh, taking in the sunshine or in the winter, I had like little ice picks so I could like cleats, I guess are called, so I could run in the snow. But it's not like, it would be insulting to a runner to call my, my, what I do running. So on my beautiful jogs, I am by this river and I see these ducks all the time. And they're like, and sometimes I see swans, but that's rare. Um, but they are the loveliest ducks ever. Like, I think that they feel the same way about me because they like flock to me. Like I'm like Snow White when I'm on my runs. These ducks just love me. So I, and they're always in couples, a man and a woman, duck. 
and whatever. Okay. So I see all my friends. I, I check in with them, you know, most mornings. And then all of a sudden for the last week, it's all dude ducks, like all males. And so either like they're all, they've all come out and, and they're dating men now. Or I'm not sure. But and then I thought about it more realistically. And I was like, my duck lady friends are all in their nests. And the men are like congregating and hanging out together while my ducklings are being, t like the eggs are being tended to. So I think I'm going to have babies really soon. Because it's been, it's been like two weeks since I've seen any of my female duck friends. I am so invested in this duck story. I need like constant updates of where are the ducks now? And, then and I'm like, cons like do, am I like their grandmother or their aunt or their friend like I'm so attached to my my adult ducks like I don't know what to think of the ducklings like they, I don't know what relationship we'll have um yeah you don't you don't want to don't come on too strong let them come to you this is but now I need to research how long duck eggs like how long the mom sit on on the eggs for so I know when to like really start trying to find my baby ducks but it's exciting every morning I look and I like sort of like even go off the ramp and like try and sneak around the like um, grass brush to see if I can find nests and stuff. I'm picturing a show called Duck Hunters and it's just following you finding your ducks. Duck lovers, like I love these ducks. And then if I see a swan on my run, I feel like, my gosh, am I living the dream? Like there's two beautiful swans in that river that so rarely come to see me, but when they do, I just can't handle it. And then there's the geese, and I don't think the geese like me so much. We haven't really bonded. The geese that are in the area around me are aggressive in a sense of, if they're on the sidewalk, you get off the sidewalk. They own that spot, and they are not moving. They're, yeah. They're an impressive animal. Mine are not mean. I just don't feel like they care for me like the ducks do. Like, we don't have that same beautiful bond. You know, you can't win them all. You can't. And then I found out that feeding bread to ducks is really bad. Um, it's bad for the environment and bad it, and bad for their everything, you know, their digestive tract. So now you're supposed to feed them corner peas, frozen corner peas or, or oats. So I really um, I feel bad about my childhood because at my cottage, I was always feeding them bread. But now I've, um, anyways, I pack special healthy treats for the ducks. So I was making little... a joke, like, are they, are they keto? Are they gluten-free? What's the... <sighs> no, they, they, like, they like the corn. And I have, like, a tiny little running pack that I, like, put my cell phone in and then, like, frozen corn, like, I'm not running out of room. I love that it's frozen corn. Every, some athletes have... Actually, I've heard of a lot of athletes using chocolate M&Ms just for their... to keep their, their pace up. Not an athlete. They... Um, excuse me, according to Dave Rose actor, you are a runner, and also your mom says you are an amazing, sweet girl, so just throwing it out there. There's some love. Wow. Well, she's my mom, so she has no choice but to say that. I mean, you say that. I've seen some relationships, so that was, uh, it's good. It's good. The love is there. If anyone's going to call me a sweet girl, it'll be my mother, I think. I yeah, and if anyone needs help getting vaccinated, just met. I don't know how to use Instagram, but message me on Facebook. I know of lots of pop ups for everyone 18 plus. Yeah, that thing opened up today. Yeah, everyone 18 all, yeah. plus can register now in all of, you know, Ontario, I believe. Can I ask you, are talent putting on the resumes now? Because I know in the States, a lot of them are that they're vaccinated or half vaccinated. I don't think it matters because even if you're fully vaccinated, you can still have COVID and pass it on to someone who's not. So I know for us, we're still COVID testing everyone. Hmm. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, yeah, for safety. Who knows when it'll change? And especially like on after drops, everyone ha like has to be COVID tested, which is great. And I mean, everyone's paid to be COVID tested. So it's just like, I feel like my husband's like paid for my sparkling water habit just through COVID tests this, this, um, this pandemic. I tried so a sparkling I water a, habit. That's I adorable. have a very cool sister-in-law who used to work at Google. And one day she brought me to Google uh, for lunch. Um, and it was like my dream come true. My, my number one passion, like I don't need to eat food. I need individual beverages. Like, like sparkling waters and kombuchas, like that is my jam. I cannot say enough. And since I was a little girl, like a bottle of Snapple would be my idea of a birthday gift. I love beverages. 
and not even just individual blah blah bad for the environment i do recycle but like just basically all liquids are what i'm passionate about so she brought me to google for lunch and there was like the most gorgeous healthy beautiful food and like a barista and this tea ball like all this cool stuff but on each floor there is a giant fridge filled with every kind of liqueur cold press co like any liquid you've ever had in your life that you wanted the most beautiful juices like i couldn't handle it like i must have had i was there for less than an hour I probably drank like 17 beverages. Like I just was in my element. And so now that I work from home, I like to treat myself like I'm Google. So I get myself um, like my big splurge in this pandemic since I can't travel. It's like really fun individual beverages. So um, I've never heard of a huh. But again, I could just be unaware of things. This is like one of my my many my many liquid passions. I, anything with bubbles like if I could, and, and champagne or cava or Prosecco, like bubbly wine too, is just like perfection to me. Um, any like bubbly st stuff and liquids. So yeah, I basically pretend now I work at Google and I have my own fridge filled with individual beverages. Really made it. I No, I'm just gonna say this segment is sponsored by uh -huh. <laughs> But my poor husband is like, he, he's, I'm excessive obviously from this conversation about liquids and vaccines and pretty much everything about my life and he is so normal and just calm and just not totally not so so our walk-in closet is filled with cases of beverage and I like try and hide them but he's like and I try and get our I'm too scared to go into grocery stores so I get everything delivered and I try and get it when I know he's going to be out so he doesn't see like the excessiveness but sometimes he's home and he'll see the like nine cases of beverages that arrive and it's but I figure like I haven't bought any clothing. I obviously haven't traveled and traveling is my, is my passion even above bubbly water. Uh, so I figure like if this is what's gonna bring me ultimate joy, I'm gonna go for it. Go for it. I'm actually, this. I'm picturing your kitchen will now be just boxes of different beverages stacked up to be chairs and you'll fashion a kitchen table because you'll just have this. Extra. I could, I honestly could, but it's like how much can I hide in my closet before it's like, dangerous you know I would I don't and the know. pandemic has brought the worst out in me like I was already into excessive things you know like some people can handle only like when they run out of something they go and get it like I need to have a backup of everything in my life ready we would have never run out of toilet paper hand soap like I like to have I everything needs to be stopped it makes me feel calm but the pandemic has made me even nuttier like if I don't have 11 cases of sparkling water I panic no I I don't it's funny, you're trying to not be as much of a hoarder kind of family. And then, you know, the pandemic hits and you go, oh, well, I need everything because there could be a shortage and there almost was a shortage. So let's just stock up everything. And you go, yeah. well, oh, but I have nowhere to put it. So I guess this is uh, just a little footstool now and it looks great here. <laughs> yep. It's just me. I've accepted me for who I am. No, I think it's, I think a lot of people, I, you're not, you make yourself sound, a lot of people do what you do, honestly. It's not I don't true. think, I think if I brought you into my walk-in closet, you would not say a lot of people do what I do. Well, I'm trying to make you feel good on my life, okay? My thoughts in my head are a little different than what I'm saying now. But even at Man Casting, you can ask our clients, like, we had beautiful individual beverages. We never ran out. I kept that office stocked to perfection. That's just, okay, uh, any beverage? And they ask for the most absurd thing. Got it what yeah yeah i do miss that like before pandemic i was a caterer like because we have clients all the time and everyone has food this and food that and needs that i was i was i got very very good at catering um meals and now i don't have that fun anymore i would hate coming to casting around lunchtime and i would see the cool food and the yummy smells i mean Oh man, uh, I was gonna eat after my audition because I'll probably spill on my clothes. So uh, I'll just kind of smell that as I walk in. And be, what did you eat? I got so good at ordering now that I didn't even give clients individual menus and let them pick what they wanted. I'd be like, here's three restaurant options. Trust me, I got this. I mean, and then I would order a bunch of stuff pre COVID. Now everything will be quite individually wrapped, no sharing. Um, but before. Do you still order? So if, if the, uh, what's it called? If, the production team or whatnot is on the call. Do they still? No, no, they, they provide their own meals. Okay, I'm like, I don't know if there's a need for that. That would be interesting. Yeah, no, no, no. My catering business is shut down. And now I've gone into vaccinating. That's my new passion. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta just pivot. <laughs> this is your pivot. Yeah, I'm no longer a professional caterer. I'm a professional vaccination hunter. 
that's I mean, duck lover, vaccination hunter. I've got a lot of things to add to your resume. This is very stress baker. Stress baker. Stress baker, not stress eater, which is probably yeah. the better of the two. Yeah. Stress. But I mean, even sometimes, like, it, it, I don't know what would be better. Like, if I would just eat a cookie, it'd be probably better than baking, like, nine loaves of bread, you know? Like, and, but now I take the holidays so seriously because I can really bake and I can make packages and deliver. So, and I'm really into themes. So like Valentine's Day, I could make pink cookies, red cookies, purple cookies, hearts, flowers. Um, and then Mother's Day, you know, flowers and I don't know, any holiday, it makes me very excited. I saw, I saw the hamantashens and I thought that's, those are hard. I have never attempted to make them. My hamantashen were ugly, but my son liked making them. We have, we belong to PJ Library, which probably every Jewish kid in the city does. It's this amazing organization. I don't know a lot about it, except for they send me a book for every holiday, a free book. And we read about it and there's usually a recipe. So like um, yesterday was Shavuot. And so they ate blintzes in, um, in his PJ library book. So we have to order the ingredients and make blintzes this week to celebrate. That's so, classic cheese blintzes. That is uh, always a Shavuot thing. We were having a whole discussion today, my husband and I, and actually we were debating the cheesecake because that's usually up there as well. What my is mom is famous for her cheesecake in Israel. She lived in Israel for a long time. It was published in the paper and still people talk Whoa. about her cheesecake. What was, I mean, what's the secret ingredient? I, I'm not sure. I've never made it, um, but famous. That, I, to be published in a newspaper for your cheesecake, that's really impressive. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I was waiting. I'm like, maybe she'll put it in the comments. What's the secret recipe? You never know. I have oh, no idea. Totally knocked that over. That was fun. I wanted to like guess. I like to guess what you were reading. And I don't want to say it's not a good email. Oh, okay. Never mind then. We. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, okay. Oh my gosh. Is this how you get bad news? We are different people. Ugh. You know, now oh my I gosh. just flip it. Sarah, more importantly, oh. we just found out the secret is vanilla pudding. So now You know what? I, I actually it. did know that, but I was acting and lying because I didn't know she wanted to share her secret. I've still never made it, but I knew. And she used to make it for everyone's like, bar bat mitzvah. And she would put like these, she'd put nuts on it in a caramel sauce and make it. And, and like in like a flower of almonds. She was very, I mean, it's, just, it's a very famous cheesecake. I'm going to look this up. Joni Shep's vanilla pudding secret ingredient. Thank you for sharing. If yeah, I ever feel mom, like I was not trying to tell your secret since. Yes, we also know that Sarah's a really good actor now. So I don't know what this on camera bad acting was that you talked about, but I was very convinced that you didn't know. I did. I, did. I knew all along, Robin. I knew it was, but I didn't know she wanted to share. No, thanks for sharing. This is, this is a very, we're a very open and just chill community on the Instagram live when you can't see anyone's face and you feel like you can share anything. That's how we roll. I mean, I've told you all my secrets. I've got nothing more to hide than my- Okay, you know what's really funny though, Sarah? Water. We were, I was having this discussion on Clubhouse with different casting directors in the States and they talk about getting gifts. And again, a lot of people say, don't give us gifts. But I think if anyone watches this, you're just gonna get a case of weird drinks. If they book something to say thank you, you're just gonna get this, the drinks of whatever, some carbonated something, and just, and because it's not, it's not overly expensive, but it's also, I know a specific thing about Sarah. Here's the attention to detail. Aw, well, no one needs to ever buy me anything. I, um, I don't need anything, but I do love sparkling water. <laughs> <laughs> if you happen to have a little sparkle of the water. <laughs> no, no one should ever feel obligated to buy anybody anything. You know what I mean? Ever. Um, yeah, don't ever feel obligated. No, I agree. I agree. I think it was honestly when actors book something and they just didn't, because I think they're just so grateful, right? Because you brought them into the room and you gave them that chance. And now they're, they're able to book something, right? There's no other way to know it. Mm -hmm. So oh, Dave is writing it down in the little notepad of what to get people. But it's, it's just a way of saying thank you. And I know some people are very old school, like I love a handwritten note or... I, I don't know. I think it's just how do they express gratitude to casting, but I guess that's part of the job. So 
I don't know. I always want to say thank you. I just yeah. I mean, I feel like when my husband books stuff too, he always you know likes to like in his next audition at the same casting house will you know bring a case of beer, a bottle of wine, but but just because you know like I mean he because he works on the other side too. He sees like just like sometimes how long a day it is and then it's like all of a sudden we have a bottle of wine and it's like oh when we're done we can have a glass of wine excited but no one should ever feel obligated um obviously we're happy when you book stuff because it means moving on to the next job <laughs> very true it's over it's over yeah what do you ever find that people switch casting like if you were doing something can they switch if you're doing a project like okay we're with you but we're going to go somewhere else. Does that ever happen? Oh, that's rare. I mean, sometimes we lean on each other and help each other out. Like if we have a job that's so hard, um, finding really, really, really specific stuff, we'll work with another company, but some crazy shit has to hit the fan. If in the middle they switch to another and we're all like friends. Like, I mean, there's not that many people who cast commercials and we all, I mean, we all speak to each other, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, we all met and we're like, how do we navigate this? What do we do? Um, so I feel like, and we're always like, uh, like they'll call me and be like, I need staff and, and I'll be like, borrow this person or I need it, please can we borrow your camera person? And I feel like, I mean, Steven's been in it for so long and so have the others. And I think they're all, I mean, they're all friends-ish, you know, we all, yeah, it'd, it'd be some crazy, crazy thing would have to happen if that happened. No, I was curious. I mean, I always see different, ca we're supporting other casting directors, have you help us find this? And I thought that is so nice. What a nice community we have. We're know. lucky. Like, I mean, there's enough work for for everybody, I think. Um, and of course, we want, you know, we want people to come and film in Toronto. So we want everyone to be successful. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I know, Sarah, I know you're super busy and you're just like trying to stay calm. <laughs> I'm like trying to have one bad. No, no, that's fine. Let's, let's, okay, if there's, let's leave on like a word of wisdom so people can be, um, is there any like positive thought you would like to share with That's my thought always just about life in general but mostly for casting in the business and blah 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 like it is so important to be nice you like everyone's replaceable of course there's so many actors blah 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 and if you're like a not nice person and it gets out on set or to a PA or I mean to casting and it, like I will remember that and and we you know it's we, we just I want the nice person to win. And at the end of the day, like they're always, every picture's on the desk. These are the top three. Sarah, Steven, what do you know about them? And if I, if someone's like a terrible person and has been terrible, like I just will kind of say no comment. But if someone's a lovely human, like I want to see them succeed. So for some strange reason, I just am like, God's gift to acting. Like they're so great. They're so wonderful. You know, I want to talk positive and warm about everyone. And I just feel like if everybody was just kind of like nice and kind and treated everyone with respect on our side too, it would just, it just makes everything so much more pleasant and better. So I just think be, be nice, be nice. It's, I mean, it's a pandemic, but be nice. We're all in it together. We all want, even pre pandemic, we want everyone to be happy and successful. So it's best to be nice. I love that. <laughs> No, and, but it's, yeah. it's like just be a good human you know and, and yeah it sounds simple but it's actually hard to do sometimes so guys, yeah and you I mean, nice people. all the good I mean most people are good people which is great but all the like these lovely humans like I just want them to succeed so much and I can't stop saying great things about them you know and it just makes to me when I watch their performance so much better where I'm like look at this beautiful truthful actor like they're just it's just they radiate loveliness and and we want we want that I love that Sarah, Woo! thank you. Thank you so much. That was, ev uh, I just, I don't know. I love chatting with you. Yes, throw in the hearts. Amazing. Oh, we can't. Oh, I like that there's rosy cheeks on the glasses. I think that's my favorite part. Is that better? Oh. Yeah, I think that's what I was Well, I'm now going to go dive into my life of casting, which is just going to be thrilling. Thank thrilling. you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Sorry that I couldn't, that I, you know, with all my technical issues. You did great. Thank you. Honestly, this was one of the more successful technology ones. You and if anyone's amazing. thirsty, I live in the distillery. I have a lot of liquids and I'm always willing to share. Very generous of you. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank Goodbye. You. Bye. We'll see if okay, I figure I'll out how to do this. I'll end, not a problem. Thank okay, you, you end it. Watching, I'll just smile. Thank you so much. Bye.